All right, welcome back, everybody. We're sitting down now with Mitch Holtis, the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs. I appreciate you being here. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, one of the biggest storylines of the offseason was obviously the departure of Tyreek Hill. Now, I think the offense is going to be fine, but I do think it's going to look different because Tyreek's such a unique player. Um, you know, what will they be missing on offense, and how do you think it will look different with him not being in the lineup? Well, I know you were outstanding as a mathematician student at Yates Center, so let's go back to those days because, honestly, this, this equation isn't A equals A. This is a multiple um, equation here, multiple variables, I should say. What I saw this spring and summer that I was encouraged about was everybody contributing, meaning Mark Valdez scantling will be a part of this, obviously, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, Sky Moore, who was a little bit uh, dinged with a hamstring, but I look for McCole Hartman to take a jump up. And then the running back room is better. Uh, there, it's deeper to me, and there's more girth there. Uh, ever since Damian Williams left after Super Bowl 54, they've been missing the bigger, faster back. So Isaiah Pacheco, a seventh-round pick from Rutgers, kind of fits that role. So does Ronald Jones Jr. So I saw a lot of things this spring and summer that really encouraged me. The biggest thing, though, was this hyper-focus from Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Kelsey was incredible. And I, I went up to him and like, dude, you're, like, you're acting like you're trying to make the team. And he just said, I've refound my love for football. One, and two, we're a little bit ticked off. Like everybody thinks we're gonna be fourth and be covered in molten lava by Thanksgiving because we're gonna be three and 14. These guys are going to camp on a mission. Uh, I'm gonna to move to the other side of the ball now. Obviously Tyron Matthew is no longer with the team. Um, I think he brought a lot to the defensive side. Um, you know, what did he bring that, you know, that side of the ball is going to have to replace and how special you know, was he for this team? I think that, you know, we can lose sleep over a lot of things. Don't lose sleep over that one. Uh, Tyron struggled last year, quite honestly. And people look at the leadership factor. I, I see no backward movement there. Uh, now, some of our younger players, Nick Bolton's going to be right in the centerpiece of this defense. He wears the green dot. He gets the calls. Uh, whether the Chiefs are in nickel, dime, or whatever they're going to be in, he'll be out there. And he's an athletic player in his second year and can make dynamic plays. This is going to be a younger, faster, more explosive defense, in my opinion. You mentioned a couple of the guys, but they're going to rely on some, some younger guys on, on that side of the ball. Um, you know, what are you hearing from the team on some of the guys that they've drafted, where they're at right now, and how, how they will contribute early in the season? Well, you're looking at guys, I mean, George Karloftis will start from day one. And he was exciting to watch. Like, his motor is always running. Once you just flip the switch, he does not throttle down. If you keep going on down the defense, I already mentioned Brian Cook is going to be a, an immediate contributor, uh, in my opinion. Leo Chanel maybe will ease in a little bit more, uh, just because a player that no one has talked about in this offseason who will contribute, and he's not into the rookies, but Elijah Lee, who was a great player at K-State, uh, grew up in Blue Springs in his seventh year in the league, almost decapitated McCall Hardman at Super Bowl 54 when he was a 49er, is going to really help this team. And then, of course, I left out Trent McDuffie. Like, he'll start from day one at a corner spot. Not as big as those other guys I mentioned, but very savvy. And he's also very, very tough. Like, he will, he will play the run as well as the uh, passing game. I think Chiefs fans should anticipate a defense that is much better and much more impactful. All right, the last thing I want to ask you about is the AFC West. I mean, you look around the league, and I think almost everybody got better uh, in, the, in this division. Uh, you know, it's not like the Patriots running through the Jets and Dolphins and Bills for 20 years. Um, you know, how tough do you think it will be for Kansas City to, to make it seven in a row? I'm going to answer a question with a question. Is the quarterback still here? Because every metric that you measure a quarterback on, every one of them, he's the best in NFL history after a four-year time as a starter. And he's already won a Super Bowl. So he checks all those boxes, and he's 58 and 16. Is the coach still here? Because the rest of the division coaches in the AFC West, respect them all, have 20 total wins in their life. Andy Reid has 19 playoff wins. Is the quarterback still here? Yes. Is the coach still here? Yes. Is the best tight end to ever play in the National Football League? And I'll fight anybody on that one. Yes. So that and with the younger players that have been added, and I just think the Chiefs are being like undersold in this discussion. Someone would be the first person to pick them fourth in the division, but do so at your own peril. All righty. I appreciate your time. Thanks for visiting with us. You got it. We'll be right back.